a Wikividi Documentaries production. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Enjoy. Moon, Film Moon is a 2009 science fiction film co-written and directed by Duncan Jones. The film follows Sam Bell, a man who experiences a personal crisis as he nears the end of a three-year solitary stint mining helium-3 on the far side of the moon. It was the feature debut of director Duncan Jones. Kevin Spacey voices Sam's robot companion, Gutty. Moon premiered at the 2009 Sundance Film Festival and was released in selected cinemas in New York and Los Angeles on 12 June 2009. The release was expanded to additional theaters in the United States on 10 July and to the United Kingdom on 17 July. Moon was modestly budgeted and grossed just under $10 million worldwide, but was well received by critics. Rockwell's performance found praise as did the film's scientific realism and plausibility. It won numerous film critic and film festival awards, and was nominated for the BAFTA Award for Best British Film. Plot Summary In 2035, Lunar Industries has made a fortune after an oil crisis by building Sarang Station, an automated lunar facility, to mine the alternative fuel helium-3 from lunar soil, rich in the material. The facility is fully automated requiring only a single human to maintain operations, oversee the harvesters, and launch canisters bound for Earth containing the extracted helium-3. Currently, Sam Bell nears the end of his three-year work contract at Sarang Station. Chronic communication problems have disabled his live feed from Earth and limit him to occasional recorded messages from his wife Tess, who was pregnant with their daughter Eve when he left. His only companion is an artificial intelligence named Gertie, who assists with the base's automation and provides comfort for him. Two weeks before his return to Earth, Sam suffers from hallucinations of a teenage girl. One such image distracts him while he is out recovering a helium-3 canister from a harvester, causing him to crash his lunar rover into the harvester. Rapidly losing cabin air from the crash, Sam falls unconscious in the rover. Sam awakes in the base infirmary with no memory of the accident. He overhears Gertie receiving instructions from Lunar Industries to prevent him from leaving the base and to wait for the arrival of a rescue team. His suspicions aroused, he manufactures a fake problem to persuade Gertie to let him outside. He travels to the crashed rover, where he finds his unconscious doppelganger. He brings the double back to the base and tends to his injuries. The two sums start to wonder if one is a clone of the other. After a heated argument and physical altercation, they together coerce Gertie into revealing that they are both clones of the original Sam Bell. Gertie activated the newest clone after the rover crash, and convinced him that he was at the beginning of his three-year contract. The two Sams search the facility, discovering a secret vault containing hundreds of hibernating clones. They determine that Lunar Industries is unethically using clones of the original Sam Bell to avoid the cost of new astronauts. The elder Sam drives past the interference radius in a second rover and tries to call Tess on Earth. He instead makes contact with Eve, now 15 years old, who says Tess died some years ago. He hangs up when Eve tells her father that someone is calling regarding Tess. The two Sams realize that the incoming rescue team will kill them both if they are found together. The newer Sam convinces Gertie to revive another clone, planning to leave the revived clone's corpse in the crash rover and send the older Sam to Earth in one of the Helium-3 transports. But the older Sam, with his health declining, knows that he will not live much longer. Older Sam suggests the younger Sam leave instead. The older Sam is placed back into the crash trover to die so Lunar Industries will not suspect anything until it is too late. Following Gertie's advice, the younger Sam reboots Gertie to wipe its records of the events. Before leaving, the younger clone programs a harvester to crash and wreck a jamming antenna, thereby enabling live communications with Earth. The older Sam, back in the crippled rover, remains conscious long enough to watch the launch of the transport carrying the younger Sam to Earth. The rescue team finds the newly awakened clone in the medical bay, and the body of the older Sam and are fooled. The transport arrives at Earth, and over the film's credits, news reports describe how Sam's testimony on Lunar Industries' activities has stirred up an enormous controversy, and the company's unethical practices have plummeted the company's stock. Production 
This is the first feature film directed by commercial director Duncan Jones, who co-wrote the script with Nathan Parker. The film was specifically written as a vehicle for actor Sam Rockwell. Rockwell almost turned the film down, and Paddy Considine was an alternate choice. The film pays homage to the films of Jones's youth, such as Silent Running, Alien, and Outland. Jones described his interest in the lunar setting. The director described the lack of romance in the moon as a location, citing images from the Japanese lunar orbit of Selene. It's the desolation and emptiness of it. It looks like some strange ball of clay and blackness. Look at photos and you'll think that they're monochrome. In fact, they're not. They're simply no primary colors. Jones made reference to the photography book Full Moon by Michael Light in designing the look of the film. Moon's budget was $5 million. The director took steps to minimize production costs, such as keeping the cast small and filming in a studio. Moon was produced at Shepperton Studios, in London, where it was filmed in 33 days. Jones preferred using models to digital animation. Jones worked with Bill Pearson, the supervising model maker on Alien, to help design the lunar rovers and helium-3 harvesters in the film. The moon base was created as a full 360-degree set, measuring 85 long and approximately 70 feet wide. The film's robot, Gutty, was designed to be bound to an overhead rail within the mining base since its mechanical tether was critical to the story's plot. The visual effects were provided by Sunicide, which has sought cut-price deals with independent films. Since Jones had an effects background with TV advertisements, he drew on his experience to create special effects within a small budget. Release International sales for Moon are handled by the independent sales company. Sony Pictures Worldwide Acquisitions Group acquired distribution rights to the film for English-speaking territories. Sony Pictures Worldwide Acquisitions Group was considering making Moon a direct-to-DVD release. However, after Moon premiered at the 2009 Sundance Film Festival in January 2009, Sony Pictures Classics decided to handle this film's theatrical release for Sony Pictures Worldwide Acquisitions Group. Sony Pictures Classics distributed the film in the United States in cinemas, beginning with screenings in selected cinemas in New York and Los Angeles on 12 June. The film's British premiere was held on 20 June 2009 at the Cameo Cinema in Edinburgh as part of the 63rd Edinburgh International Film Festival. Jones was present at the screening along with other key crew members. The full UK release was on 17 July, two days after the release of Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince. The Australian release was on 8 October. Critical Reception Moon was generally well received by critics. Film review aggregator Rotten Tomatoes reports that 89% of critics gave the film a positive review based on 187 reviews, with an average score of 7. 5 tenths. The site's consensus states, boosted by Sam Rockwell's intense performance, Moon is a compelling work of science fiction, and a promising debut from director Duncan Jones. On Metacritic, which assigns a rating out of 100 based on reviews from critics, the film has a score of 67 based on 29 reviews, considered to be generally favorable reviews. Damon Wise of The Times praised Jones's thoughtful direction in Rockwell's poignant performance. Wise wrote of the film's approach to the science fiction genre, though it uses impressive sci-fi trappings to tell its story. The fabulous models and moonscapes are recognizably retro yet surprisingly real. This is a film about what it means and takes to be human. Dwayne Berger of The Hollywood Reporter applauded screenwriter Nathan Parker's sharp and individualistic dialogue and the way in which Parker combined science fiction and Big Brother themes. Berger also believed that cinematographer Gary Shaw's work and composer Clint Mansell's music intensified the drama. Berger wrote, Nonetheless, Moon is darkened by its own excellencies. The white, claustrophobic look is apt and moody, but a lack of physical action enervates the story thrust. The critic felt mixed about the star's performance, describing him as adept at limbing his character's dissolution, but finding that he did not have the audacious, dominant edge for the major confrontation at the end of the film. Empire magazine praised Rockwell's performance, 
including at in 10 egregious Oscar snubs. The worthy contenders that the Academy overlooked feature and referred to his performance as one of the best performances of the year. Roger Ebert gave the film three and a half stars out of four, saying, Moon also received positive reviews at the Sundance Film Festival. Reception from the scientific community Moon was screened as part of a lecture series at NASA's Space Center Houston, at the request of a professor there. He'd been reading online that we'd done this film about helium-3 mining and that's something that people at NASA are working on, says Jones. We did a Q&A afterward. They asked me why the base looked so sturdy, like a bunker. And not like the kind of stuff they are designing that they are going to transport with them. I said well, in the future I assume you won't want to continue carrying everything with you, you'll want to use the resources on the moon to build things and a woman in the audience raised her hand and said, I'm actually working on something called Mooncrete, which is concrete that mixes lunar regolith and ice water from the moon's polar caps. Sequels Jones is planning a follow-up film, titled Mute, which will serve as an epilogue to Moon. Sam has agreed to do a little cameo in the next film, said Jones, who ultimately hopes to complete a trilogy of films set in the same fictional universe. Brought to you by Wikivideo Documentaries Would you like to know more?